initiative. Um, they're based in Hampton Bays. I don't know if anyone has heard of them before. We're pretty active, uh, mainly in that town. Um, we're slowly integrating over here, um, you know, with um, some other uh, programs. Um, and then I have a social media marketing company called Mom, uh, Monday Media. That's pretty much gone, gone dormant since the pandemic hit. And I had, you know, up to like 12 clients that basically, you know, everyone stopped sharing on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but what I had done right before, um, before the pandemic hit was uh, start my own Instagram account because I just felt like what I wanted, I felt like I wanted to share um, the zero waste journey that I had embarked on a few years prior. And I thought, you know, this is, this is a platform people are voicing, you know, their, their journeys and a sustainable path. And so um, I started doing that. And luckily I had started that um, right before. So that's pretty much what I've maintained um, during this time as much as I could while being a stay-at-home mom all of a sudden and, and a homeschooling mom, remote learning mom. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm also serving our uh, member on the sustainable committee uh, in Southampton. Um, we meet right now, we're just meeting once a month, um, doing action items like um, banning helium balloons was one of the newest things that we've I've taken a, a part in, and also the next thing is the gla uh, gas leaf blowers, um, the usage of those during the summer season. And um, now with COVID and the increase of um, the recyclables uh, over at the transferring station, um, that's kind of our next item and uh, amongst other things. So let's just get started. I was going to maybe stop and ask questions because I have, um, this is kind of a two-parter. When I was going through this and preparing for the class, uh, for the talk, I felt like there's so much information, like it's kind of overloading, overloading people. So um, I had talked to uh, Pat about maybe doing a second part of this. Um, so with that said, I was thinking as I go through each one, like the reused bags, maybe we could have a quick discussion if you had any questions and then we can move on to the other, uh, the next one, or we could just, you could write down your questions and I can just answer them at the end. So whatever anyone's comfortable with, I don't mind. Um, and Pat, if you wanna manage chat, I could just answer questions along the way too. Sure, if people would like to ask their questions in chat, I'm happy to read them. All right. They come in after each section. That's fine. Okay. All right. So the first one, uh, reuse your bags. Um, I know, you know, as you know, Southampton banned bags in 2015. And then um, Stop and Shop being the main grocery store in town, in our town, Southampton, you know, amongst Schmitz and, you know, the little general stores, um, the, the plastic bags came back. Now, um, now they're back to letting you bring in your reusable. So um, it's always good to have those and continue to use those. Maybe you fell out of the habit of bringing them and now, you know, you just kind of need reminders um, to bring them back. Um, we always keep our bags at the door in the car um, and then, you know, getting our family members involved so everyone can be reminded, you know, before you head out or write it on your grocery list, you know, before bring, remember to bring your bags. Um, at Stop and Shop in particular, you know, they're handing out the paper bags, which is always convenient if you've left your, you know, you forgot your bags, um, but they're also selling those kind of thicker, the higher density plastic ones um, that you have to pay for. And the problem, I mean, they're a great solution for when you, you know, forget something or you don't have enough bags that you, you know, that you brought in is that if those aren't being reused and, and those paper ones barely make it to the car anyway, they're so thin that it's kind of, they're just wasteful really. Unless you're 
bringing them home and lighting your fire with them or you know you're lining your cat litter box with them like see what you can do to bring more use to that single use item um especially the thicker plastic bags you know just to be able just throwing those out afterwards is uh because those aren't recyclable and um it just ends up being wasteful and then they're generating more demand um, for them in the end so the more use you can get out of them i would just add them to your your canvas tote bag collection um so you have them right there and just keep breathing using them they're they're thick enough where um they're gonna last uh you know a good deal of time especially if you're just putting produce lighter weight items in those bags um you're gonna get more more use out of them it's just, you know, thinking about not defeating the whole purpose with the reusable, right? Just reusing them as, as often as possible. Um, if you do find yourself with too many plastic bags, the transfer station in North Sea does have a rubber made garbage can that does uh, recycle um, produce bags, um, the plastic shopping bags, shipping envelopes, um, bread bags even. Um, bubble wrap. So really take advantage of using um, that option um, to, to eliminate, you know, things going into the, directly into the landfill. The thing also about uh, Citarella, which I don't go to, oh yeah, and I'm, that's another grocery store obviously in Southampton. I don't typically go there because there's so much packaging waste uh, that I bring into my home from there. Um, I know they have the thick plastic bags also, and, you know, it's just a shame that if, let's say, you went there and you grabbed your lunch and then you, you know, you went to eat uh, at work and then you shove every, all your empty containers back in into the bag and then threw it out, right? It's just, it's basically, you know, help, helping us have a reusable bag, but if you're not reusing it, it's just the same as using, you know, the regular plastic bag. So next, oops, next is uh, resist single use drink bottles. Um, this one is also preparing before you go, uh, you leave your home um, so that you're not tempted to to buy anything on the go. The thing with buying on the go is that you'll drink your, you know, your drink of choice and then you'll throw it in the garbage can. Like if you're walking around town or something like that, or it ends up in your car and then you're at the car wash and you're, you know, you're emptying it, all your contents of your, of your waste in the garbage can there. So um, it's best to have a reusable water bottle like the picture shown, this is a stainless steel one. You can put hot beverages, cold beverages, and just using this time at home to, to make your own, you know, uh, drink, drink of choice. If you're really into, you know, hot teas or orange juice or grapefruit juice, whatever, kombucha even, even though that's a little bit more involved, um, you know, making use of the time at home to make things from, from scratch. Um, I like to refill my water bottles and have them put them in the fridge or out on the counter so I can just grab and go really quick. So when I'm running out the door, I can just grab something and I'm not delaying myself by filling up the water bottle. But again, getting your family members on board to, to remind you, hey, do you have the water bottle? My kids all each, I don't have to, I'm not like, I don't have an army of kids, but uh, they have their own drinking bottle. So I said, do you, you know, bring, make sure you fill up your water bottle before we go. Cause they're always thirsty. Like as soon as you get in the car, they need water. And, um, and you know, all this takes habit and reminders. So whatever you need to do to make reminders for yourself, uh, it's, it's definitely worth it in the long run so that you're not tempted uh, to, to buy and you'll save money. Um, along the way. If you do, you know, need, need something, definitely try for a glass, a water bottle or aluminum can. Try to bring it back home with you, rinse it out and recycle it so it does not end up in the landfill. 
Um, I don't see anything else on that. I think that's it. So we'll move to the next one, which is avoid the paper coffee cup. Um, I don't know how everyone's feeling about, you know, going into uh, uh, shops at this point and eat, you know, dining in or getting things to go. Um, but the coffee shops in town, you know, Golden Pear, Hampton Coffee Company, Starbucks, um, they do not allow reusable still to this time at this moment. I've talked to a few of them, um, you know, giving them options so that they're not touching my reusable. Um, but I, you know, I can still bring it in. They don't need to touch it, but they could fill it up and then I can walk away without uh, throwing any paper cup in the garbage. It's just, it just defeats the purpose if they're putting in a paper cup and then I'm putting it in my reusable. There's literally no purpose for that. So um, they're not into that yet, but I think the more people bring it up, my solution and Starbucks is actually doing this in, the, in, the, in Europe is they have mugs. So you put your reusable in the mug. Obviously they put the mug on the counter. You put the reusable inside it. They take it, they fill up your drink or, you know, they make your drink and then they hand it back to you in the mug. You take your reusable, you don't even touch the mug and it's a win-win, but you know, it's, people aren't ready to make those, those changes just yet. So all you can really do is self-service stations. Like they have one at Tate's, um, they have one Hampton Coffee Company, uh, the uh, the cheese shop, those kind of places, you can bring your reusable, 7-Eleven also, bring your reusable and fill up your coffee uh, or hot water or whatever and um, walk out with that. So any like specialty drinks that you might want, like lattes, espressos, chai teas, again, you know, with this extra time at home, just experimenting with uh, making those uh, just to avoid waste and to save you money. Um, Hampton's Coffee Company is a little, has stronger sustainable practices than most of the other uh, coffee companies out here or companies that serve coffee. Um, so this, you know, bringing your reusable and using their self-serve coffee station is a great way to support them and the, you know, and the local economy here. So I don't want to deter anyone from doing that. Um, also, you could try, you know, making black tea or green tea or rosemary tea, things that are a lot easier to do at home versus, you know, a chai or a, or espresso. Um, and then one last thing about the paper cup is this is a perfect example of a linear economy where the lifestyle, life cycle of, a, of the coffee cup is like a straight line, right? You're cutting your running that line from like running from a tree, running a tree in the forest through the paper mill and then the manufacturing plant to the coffee shop and then into the customer's hand and then the trash can and then the landfill. Like there's no way that this is a circular uh, product. There are biodegradable coffee cups, um, but unless you're composting at home, if it's finding its way into a garbage can, it's going to the landfill and it's not going to biodegrade there. Biodegrade, biodegrade, um, to biodegrade, you, you need oxygen. And those landfills are so airtight that, that it's not going to do any good. So I know that these companies are making those efforts and it's great if people are composting um, or digging holes in their backyard and burying this stuff, but you know, that's just not the case. And mainly it's because people drink coffee on the go, you know, they're going to work, throwing it in the trash when they get to the office, it's in the landfill. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is reduce takeout waste. Um, this is a big one now with COVID. Um, people are still not dining in. Um, and they're ordering, uh, you know, whether it's delivery or takeout. Um, I don't typically go to, I don't 
have delivery or takeout because of that waste. Like I can't, I just don't like it. And um, some of it's not recyclable, so I just avoid it. Um, but I know people enjoy, you know, saws or thing, you know, food, especially ethnic foods that are harder to make at home. Um, or, you know, you just don't want to cook every night, which I get as well. Um, so taking, ordering in is definitely a way of showing support again. Um, so to be smart about it, um, when you call in your order, make sure they don't throw in any paper napkins. Make sure they don't throw any paper uh, plastic cutlery into the bag. Um, any ketchup, mustard, things that you already have in your home, right? Um, soy sauce packets or little containers, especially the little plastic uh, containers they fill up with, you know, any sort of sauce or something. So make sure that you put those on your grocery list the next time so that you're avoiding that kind of excess waste. Um, people are still giving takeout in plastic bags. So you can say, please don't put my food in the plastic bag and you can bring your, you know, hopefully they have a paper one. And if not, then you can bring your own bag and just put your food in and then um, carry it out. Um, if you're picking up takeout and then eating it outside your home, you could like the picture here shows you know, make sure to bring your own, well, wrapped up in that napkin, you know, you bring your own cloth napkin, you bring your silverware, any straws that you may need, and then any to-go containers, um, or actually making sure that all the to-go containers that you had the food in, you bring home, you rinse out, and then you recycle. Every plastic container should have a number on the back. And if it's a one, two, or a five, those are all recyclable. And the thing is, it's dirty and people just kind of want to pitch it and be done with it and not worry about the waste, right? Because a lot of the dining in is so you don't have to cook and clean. I get it. Um, I feel like I never leave the kitchen most of the time. But it's if they're recyclable, they should be recycled. So definitely keep... Uh, your eye on that. Um, and then I think, you know, by being active, proactive, by, you know, refusing any extras that they might throw in besides the food, you're kind of making them more conscious of, um, and, and also after you get your food, you can always ask them to, you know, suggest other options that, you know, I realize that this container isn't recyclable. Is there any other, you know, I love your food. I love your restaurant. I want to keep coming back. You know, do you have any other options that you can look into? You know, the more that's voice, the more they're going to try to satisfy their customer base. So I'm, I'll stop there because I know that was a lot so far. So if anyone has any questions, um, please, please ask away and I'll answer anything you have. Okay, I don't see any questions yet, Lauren. Okay. So another thing is if you do uh, feel comfortable dining in, I like to bring my reusable uh, to my, the restaurant. So that, um, that silver kind of bowl looking object there um, is a stainless steel uh, to go container. And I, I, I can just put my food from my plate and from my kid's plate into that and take that home. So I'm again, not using any uh, to go containers from the restaurant. Also, even like salt and pepper and those kinds of things, you know, those are still little itty bitty packets and you know, how wasteful can that be? But again, it's creating that demand for it. If you're not refusing it, it still, you know, creates that demand. All right, so we'll go to the next one, which is cut ties with paper towels. I know this one is a big one for most folks, especially the moms out there or pet owners. Um, I haven't used a paper towel in forever, so I forget like the convenience of them. Um, I know I know that it, that existed at one point in time. Um, I use super stained dish towels or cloth napkins that are all stained as um, 
my paper towel substitute at this point. Um, I clean, I dry my dishes, um, uh, I wash my windows with a rag. Um, there's literally, I have no need for a paper towel. Even the quick spills, you know, I have them piled up under the sink, so it's just a grab, you know, and clean type situation. There, and I wring them out, I'll wash them out if, you know, if it's something yucky, sticky or whatever. And I rinse them out and then I throw them in the washing machine and I, you know, wash them once I have a full load of laundry, you know, with the kids clothes or whatnot. So it's not, it doesn't really require an extra step. It doesn't require an extra wash load. I don't go through that many. Um, but that's an option just to avoid those paper products. Um, cloth napkins, also kind of that same idea. Um, instead of using the, the paper towel as a napkin, using the cloth napkin in that same way. I keep it actually in this basket that you see here in the picture and I leave it on my kitchen table. And um, I have about a little, probably about 20 of them. So we're a family of four. Um, so we're not always soiling one and we kind of share them too sometimes. We're not always soiling them or so they, they last a few days. Um, and I always have extras uh, lying around. Um, scrap material that you might have lying around too really works great for the paper towel substitutes. Um, if you do end up buying paper towels, Obviously, the 100% post-consumer paper towels is the way to go. I know they're super thin and it feels like rough to the touch. Um, and you kind of feel like you're using more. But again, at least it's creating that circular, you know, uh, circular need where you're recycling your paper products and then they're generating paper towels. And it's, it's a circular motion that is again not finding its way into or at least the paper towel is finding its way into the landfill of course but it's so it's so thin that it's you can only do so much right so at least you, it's kind of one over the other so you're supporting you're supporting recycling and still contributing to the landfill but i know it's kind of a hard change uh, they have facial tissue too and toilet paper um, all those, um, the paper, the toilet paper wrapping is, uh, recyclable. The, the tube inside is, um, so that's such a great, uh, low waste option. Uh, the facial tissue, obviously, besides the little plastic that they sometimes have on there, which usually hundred percent post-consumer rollables will not have, that's completely, uh, recyclable as well. Also compostable if you need if you compost at home, that's a great brown matter option. Um, the Swedish dish towel, I don't have a picture of that in the slide. I don't know if anyone's familiar with these, but they're like very thin little sponged material. It's, um, it's, it's made out of a paper product that forms into this spongy object. It's about yay big. And those work great for spills, and um, and they work as a sponge too. So when you're thinking about your kitchen and thinking about low waste options, um, I, the the Swedish dishwash actually can be thrown right into the laundry, and it can be compostable once it's all like you know not soaking up anything anymore. So that's like an awesome option um, to a uh, low waste option to use. Um, that can serve uh, to replace the sponge too, which collects so much bacterial and is not, uh, there's one brand I think that's compostable, I think it's called Twist, um, that you can find at uh, Wild by Nature or uh, Provisions. But again, if you can avoid it, um, uh, the Swedish dishcloth is a great alternative. You can buy those online. Um, at any uh, like zero waste uh, shop and um, the uh, Eastport General Store carries them as well in Eastport. 
Okay, so next is find zipper bag and plastic wrap alternatives. This is another way of um, cutting down the waste in the kitchen. Um, most of the need for plastic wrap or zip, zipper bag, Ziploc bags are just to store food, whether it's food for snacks or, you know, your sandwich for your lunch or um, leftovers. You know, I know they're the big like freezer bags. People are just throwing a bunch of food in there and freezing them or putting them, you know, in their fridge. Really just utilizing, you know, a food container like your Tupperware, uh, your takeout containers that you rinsed and saved uh, works as a great way. I know it it's a matter of taking whatever you served your food in and transferring it and having that extra step and extra something to clean. Um, I know plastic wrap is super uh, uh, convenient, but using the food container, putting a bowl, a, a plate over a bowl and sticking that in the fridge, um, putting your fruits and vegetables. I know enough, that's another way people like to preserve um, an, you know, a half an onion or a avocado is to wrap it in plastic wrap. Um, just putting the flesh side down in the refrigerator is gonna keep it fresh. It's the oxygen that ruins your, your produce. So if you're putting it face down, you're kind of lessening that. Um, and you know, you can always make the effort to use it uh, the next day so it doesn't, you know, mold in the fridge or get lost in there. Um, beeswax um, wrap is also now super popular. You can pretty much find those uh, locally. They're super easy to make. So if you're the more creative type, um, definitely look into that. There's uh, tutorials all over. It's literally, if you can find a block of beeswax or shredded bits, you have an iron and some fabric, you can make beeswax. It's that simple. Um, stasher bags, which is in the photo here, these are also um, super convenient. Uh, they're made out of um, silicone, so they're not plastic. And these go in the freezer and they hold actual cold and hot items. So they kind of have a, you know, an added feature that the Ziploc bags don't have. Um, if you do find yourself um, you know, using the zipper bags, you know, before, and especially before you go out and buy these alternatives, of course, you want to use what you have. You want to, you know, make do. You don't want to toss out unused items. Um, you can, um, I, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, anyway, Using even a simple jar works as a way to resolve your leftovers. And it's easier to bring with you too. If you have leftover pasta or something, you can grab and go next time you're leaving the house for lunch. Something like that, that makes it super convenient, that kind of gives you that motivation and that inspiration to do it. It's just thinking that extra few steps and, um, and uh, saving you some time too even though you might feel like it's a waste of time. Because um, when you're at the grocery store and you're buying like pickles and jams and uh, other such things, definitely consider buying them in the glass jars. And then when you're done using that, that product, clean them out and store them and use them for um, food storage. Um, I really didn't know where I was going with that last little comment, but sorry about that. I cannot remember. So we'll just move on to the cotton produce bags. Um, they're here in the picture. You have, um, the ones that have the vents, which are great for produce that have the harder skin. So, um, And then, so, you know, it's, it's less protected, obviously, than the, the, the bigger uh, full cloth version. Um, plastic bags, 
uh, produce bags, you know, weren't banned with the regular plastic grocery bags, unfortunately. Um, they are recyclable, um, but in, I always suggest using these cotton ones um, before you go out and buy, you know, a set of these. Um, look around your house to see if you have any of these kinds of bags. And some garments come in fabric bags like purses and um, sheets even sometimes come in these bags now because they're trying to uh, reduce their plastic waste also, certain companies. Especially if you're more into the greener sustainable companies, they're going to come in fabric bags like that. That's another great um, way to reuse these. Um, um, they usually have, if you can see in the photo there on the other side of the little label that's sticking out on the side, that's usually where they put the tear. So they're super convenient for the cashier to weigh it, deduct the tear and, you know, so it's not holding up the line or anything like that. Um, and you don't have to get everything weighed before you check out, like it's super convenient now and, and has been for a long time with these. Um, these are great, you know, for all your produce, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, and all your, your bulk uh, needs. Um, if you go to the bakery, you know, you can bring these also and have them put your bread or your, you know, your croissants or whatever in a, a dinner rolls or whatever in them. So that's another way of avoiding um, that kind of packaging waste to go waste. Um, sometimes when I pretty much used up all my cotton produce bags, I'll just use my tote bags, my grocery bags, and I'll fill those up with the vegetables. And then the cashier takes them out, weighs them, and then we just, I just put them right back in. So that's another way that you can kind of avoid an added purchase if you're not into purchasing more things. Um, old pillowcases works too. I've definitely used those. Um, if you do end up needing produce bags, try to reuse them, of course. Try to throw them in your canvas bags so you could bring them to the grocery store again and try to reuse them again over and over. Um, you could use those for sandwiches uh, if you're on the go. Garbage, you know, the small bathroom garbage can, those work well as little garbage uh, can liners. Um, you can carry wet clothes like bathing suits or dirty shoes, smelly items. If you have a pet, that could be an alternative. So really just trying to, if you're going to use something that's kind of more of a considered a single use item, trying to find ways to be creative and reusing them. So you just create less demand for that product. Um, Okay, we did have one comment in the chat yeah. and it said, I find using rags for cleaning can destroy the rags and creates more laundry. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on um, what you're cleaning. Um, if you have like old t-shirts or an old sheets, you know, um, those, you know, using up that scrap fabric to make more rags is always, you know, a way of where you can kind of still keep building your supply. Um, I, and it depends on how much you're cleaning. So I can't imagine you're using, filling up a whole washing machine full of rags, but maybe you are, and it's, maybe it's halfway full and you're do, finding yourself, um, you know, doing more laundry. You can always, hang them to dry so that they're not, you know, before, you know, before you wash them, hang them to dry and then they're not molded. They're not turning into mold. You know, you're not just throwing a wet something, um, you know, all bunched up. You, you know, unfold it and lay it to dry and then you, you wash it when you can. So that, that would be my suggestion for that. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, um, a friend of mine gave me a Swedish dish towel last uh -huh. year. It's phenomenal. It lasts for a very long time. It's soft. It's just incredible for cleaning, even hanging just as a decoration. 
Yeah, it's really pretty. <laughs> I've never heard of them before. Yeah, I know. And they've been around since the 1940s. Can you believe it? So if anyone is, you know, heading to the store, going out on Amazon, I'd highly recommend buying one. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if anyone's interested on some zero waste stores, I know Amazon is, um, you know, super reliable and fast, faster, maybe these days, um, but supporting um, our local community. There are a couple of um, uh, Long Island zero waste shops and um, uh, one in the city that, you know, is going to use the postal service, you know, and, um, and the, the packaging is not going to come in any bubble wrap or something. So um, I can um, put those out there uh, afterwards for you guys if you're interested in that. Or just e easily doing a zero waste store search, it's going to come up. Anything sustainable sh online shopping shops like that. Wild, minimalist, and other things like that. But I can put those in the chat at the end. Um, so let's move on to shop the bulk because we're getting late here. Shop the bulk section. Um, this one's not so easy in Southampton. You do have to venture out to Hampton Bays or in Watermill for bulk uh, shopping. It's the number one way to cut down on a lot of packaging waste. You can see in the photo like pearled couscous, brown rice, barley, red lentils, you know, so many legumes, uh, a, a bunch of seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Um, those are still available right now. All your flour, sugar, um, there's even chocolate, uh, jelly beans, granola, tons of dry food, like maybe too much dry food. I don't, there seems to have like a, such a variety of dried food and nuts. Um, it's, it's limiting. Uh, Wild by Nature by far has the largest bulk section are in town um, and, ha and they're only using half of it right now. They're not letting anyone do the scoop um, bulk purchasing, unfortunately. Uh, they are letting you use your own cotton bags though for the produ uh, cotton produce bags like we just showed before. So definitely bring those to your bulk section. Um, if they don't have that option, um, try to use the paper bags um, instead of the plastic bags. Um, and then again, if you do, re try to reuse your pla the plastic bags. Um, they said once COVID, you know, I just went to Albany a few weeks ago and I went to the most amazing bulk shop I've ever seen. And, they're, it complete, and it's completely open. So I don't know what Wild by Nature is waiting for, but... Um, and again, it's up to, you know, how comfortable you are doing that also, but, uh, definitely cuts down on so much packaging waste and you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it in your, in your trash, in your kitchen for sure. Um, and then you can store them in the jars that you save. Like you can see in this picture, this was one is like a pasta sauce and some juice that my husband insisted on buying. Um, like he just got into this whole thing with this juice, which was too much waste for me. I was like, let's just make, try to make that from scratch at home. But now we're reusing these, these glass jars and they, you know, you know exactly what it is. You can see what it is and, and it's super convenient. Uh, shop your local farmers markets and stands. We have so many amazing ones out here on the East End when the time comes. Um, it's a great way of supporting the local community. Um, you're obviously traveling. The food is traveling fewer miles because it's grown and then sold right there. So that's um, bringing a lower impact on the environment, of course. Um, usually the food sold is in season. Um, I know that some markets try to kind of make up for and have more, want to have everything, even though it's not local or in season. Um, so they, they still um, sell um, from other countries their food. Um, but just be mindful, you can see what's a local or not local or at least state brought in from, the, from upstate or something like that. 
um, but usually in soul in season means fewer right resources to make it right so that's always an um an incentive to buying at the markets or the stands that we have around um it also is a great way to talk to your farmer and learn about their growing practices um i've been fascinated just going to green thumb and learning about how they make their uh, to grow their uh, organic produce which is one of the few ones on the South Fork. Um, and, uh, you know, connects you to your community in that way also. And reconnect to your food, really, because you know where it's being grown, you know who's growing it, and, you know, you just feel more connected to it, and you know it's safe, and you know nothing was done to it that, you know, could be questionable. And especially with soil regeneration and, you know, trying to improve our soil, knowing that they're a part of that mission too is, is rewarding in and of itself. Um, ECI, the Eco Ecological Cultural Initiative that I work with, um, they manage a farmer's market now in Hampton Bays, the only one in Hampton Bays. Um, they're running through Memorial Day to uh, uh, into November. So um, look out for that. That's every Thursday at the old Macy's parking lot. Um, reduce your food waste. Uh, this is a huge one. Um, and I'll try to go through this one relatively quickly and not spend too much time on it so we can get to, to the other ones. Um, basically, food waste is the unused part of the food. Um, like you see here in this photo, um, broccoli stalks, you know, if you're into kale and Swiss chard, you know, those kind of hard stems, um, people tend not to want to eat or know, kind of know what to do with. Um, food waste is also, uh, you know, the spoiled food that, that has been in your refrigerator that you didn't end up eating. Um, you made too much dinner and, you know, no one wants to eat the rest and you don't, you don't eat leftovers and then you toss the, the leftover pasta or whatever. Um, food waste is a huge issue for climate change um, uh, due to the farming practices and the methane that's caused by food waste in landfills. Um, so really trying to find ways to stretch the use of of um, the unused parts. Um, I have experimented a lot with these. So I now use um, my kale stems in stews and soups where they get really soft, right? So you don't even taste them um, or just eat them. Like I was like weirded out. Like my kids were like, no, nah, I don't want that crunchiness or whatever. Uh, the broccoli stalks, the broccoli stems, they're really great. Uh, uh, roasted. So when you're roasting cauliflower or where your broccoli Brussels sprouts, using them in that way. Um, I love making veggie stock with mine. So I have a huge bin in my freezer and I just throw all my, this was actually going in the freezer at the time I took this photo. So I boil them with a bunch of herbs and spices for about an hour. It wilts all the way down. And then I have this amazing veggie stock that I can use afterwards. So it's, you know, getting that next, you, stretching your dollar, right? Getting as much as you can out of that product, out of that produce. Um, if you find yourself with leftover food, again, we kind of covered that before, um, you know, make sure to use it the next night or bring it to lunch the next day. Freeze it is always an option if you're not, you know, you kind of like to mix things up so you have it, you can eat it the next week. Um, your freezer is always your best friend. Um, when you're writing down your grocery list, you know, try doing meal planning. Um, only buy what you need. Uh, don't go crazy and like think you're going to do all these from scratch recipes five, seven days a week. You know, it's sometimes not realistic. Make sure you kind of do some easy, you know, fast recipes mixed in with your more, you know, labor intensive ones. Use the produce first, you know, so make all your produce heavy recipes, uh, meals at the beginning of the week so that they're not all, you know, you don't get deterred from using them um, towards the end of the week if they started to yellow or something like that. 
um, you knowing your refrigerator drawers, have, knowing how to use those drawers, the low humidity and high humidity to preserve your food, they're gonna stretch those uh, produce items a lot longer, fruits and uh, included in that. Um, start composting is another way of reducing your food waste. Um, that pretty much cuts down uh, along with all these other items that I've already talked to you about will cut down your trash significantly. And you know, we, we're the ones that end up with this, this trash, right? And like packaging trash and we have to pay for it to be removed. So the way you can like lessen it, um, cutting your food waste is like, it's like, um, it's cutting half your waste in most cases. Um, What else? Um, uh, also carrot tops, if people are actually buying carrots full, you know, and not already cut down. Carrot tops, beet, radish tops, those are great in like pestos and in salads and um, um, can be used, you know, um, using the whole uh, celery stock, and then if you have leftovers, adding it to the freezer for your for your later use of uh, making stock. Um, what else? Um, if you know people who have chickens, they love food waste as well. Um, my neighbor two doors down has chickens, and this was like an amazing thing that I found during COVID. So that. So we've been doing kind of barters with that, that way. Um, yeah, really using your freezer is gonna save you a lot of uh, options for, you know, what to do with food that you kind of bought too much of, just freeze it. Chop everything down, put it in your food container, put it in the fridge for la uh, freezer for later use. Anything that you think is going to start to mold, put it in the freezer. Um, cake is, and any big good item is like amazing. If you put it in the freezer and take it out again in a few weeks or even a month, it's still super good and you, no, no need to uh, waste that also. So I'd like to hear anyone's food waste uh, options. I know this is this is like this new thing that is such an old, old pastime, you know, when you were, you know, it's kind of an old way of using and stretching your dollar, you know, no one wanted to create waste. Um, so here we are again. Um, another great uh, tip, which I always do is take inventory of the food that I have in the refrigerator. Um, or in my pantry before I go to the grocery store and I base all my meal planning off of what I already have in the fridge. So I'm not like buying double of things and also knowing what's in your fridge and pantry, taking that inventory. So you're not buying duplicates of something and then that's expiring or spoiling and, and being thrown out in the end. Any questions on that one before I move? Okay, we had one comment, broccoli stems, cauliflower stems, et cetera, can be put in a blender and added to soup or stew. Holy. And then we actually had one comment back to the rags. I find using the microfiber rags very useful. I yeah. use them to wipe countertops, furniture, appliances, and kitchen sink. Yeah. They wash and dry well, plus very durable. I get mine from the hardware store, Walmart, Amazon, et cetera, $5 for 12. Right. So... If you have them, keep using them for sure. I believe they have plastic in them. So that's the, when you're washing and, and, and your foods, uh, your, your fabric scraps that you're using, um, you know, you would hope, you know, that's just one, that's, that's something we'll talk in the next one, but like fast fashion and having clothes that are not made that are made with plastic, you know, anything nylon, anything synthetic, those microplastics are coming out in the wash. So, but if you already own them, I say use them. I mean, trashing them, I, I, I don't know. It's like a hard, do you throw them away? Do you not use them? Or do you continue Washington to make 
microplastics. I don't know. I, it's what do you do? You can only do so much, right? So, um, yeah, definitely. I know that they're useful because they have that abrasive side and then they have the super soft side. Um, reuse, uh, refuse, sorry, refuse freebies. Um, if you don't need them, this is anything to like promotional pens to bags, especially people are giving out. My dentist gave me a, a plastic fabric bag, you know, the fake synthetic fiber bags. I don't know, like with, from my dentist. And I was like, no, thank you. I don't need that. I don't need another bag. I have enough, I prefer cotton bags and I have enough of those already. Um, so refusing those party favors and those annoying packets of junk at the dentist's office, um, refusing those as well. These are, these freebies are everywhere and they use a ton of resources to make. And by saying yes to them, even though they're free, and I know it can be tempting, we were out on the beach, they were giving out, you know, plastic sunglasses and beach balls and all that stuff that you're never probably will never remember to use again, you know, even if they even make them home with you from the beach that day that, you know, who knows if that will even happen. It's just creating more demand and more waste in the end. If you really don't need it. If you do need something that's free, obviously take it. Um, but in my opinion, you know, taking a good book or a hand-me-down that's free, obviously you're not going to refuse but, but these freebies that, that they just kind of pass out to you for promotional purposes are such a, such a wasteful item. This picture actually, we have been refusing, um, we have been refusing uh, the dentist's office bags, um, you know, the goodie bags for our kids and uh, for the adults also, but for the kids. And she, um, Dr. Nancy, I don't know if you guys know this pediatric dentist, she actually now purchases um, bamboo toothbrushes and wooden toys to give to, I don't know if she gives them to all kids or gives them the option, but she's been given, she gave them to my kids once. I, I won't take it again if it's the same item, obviously. But, you know, just by refusing, that's, the reaction that she had. Like she could not give our kids anything and we were fine with that. We were already refusing it, but she went to that extra step to, to meet us there and you know to change her ways. So uh, that's just a positive influence that um, we inspired. Uh, so just two more. Uh, the next one is um, a reusable mask, obviously disposable masks and plastic gloves. You know, we all, use them at the beginning of the pandemic you know, and plastic gloves, I think people are still using. So, um, you know, they're made out of plastic and they're causing a lot of waste. Um, every challenge is a moment to learn. And um, I realized, you know, I, I wear a mask to protect people and I use a reuse, I choose a re reusable mask to protect people and the planet. So. They're, they're popping up everywhere, you know, at this point in time. So definitely um, using those instead of the disposable ones, you know, these are a washable as well. So if you feel more comfortable using it and then washing it, you always have a clean one at the ready. Um, there's no real reusable solution for gloves, unfortunately, but, you know, if you keep them in your car, you know, a day or two later, um, you can use them a second, third, fourth time. And so getting into the habit of that too, and before you toss them in the trash. Um, so the last thing is recycle. Um, the EPA uh, estimates that 70% of the American waste stream is recyclable, but we're only recycling about 30% of it. And now with the pandemic, it's much less than that and much more waste. Um, you know, we're, like I said before, we're the ones that are left to dispose of the waste. And, and um, in Southampton, they've seen such an increase of, of, in the influx of population out here that they have more reusable and more waste than they did before. And so most likely they're gonna pass um, a, a legislature to have 
uh, us pay $50 a year um, to haul out the recycling because now no one's coming into Southampton to pick up the recyclables. We're, it's actually being carted uh, to Islip to be recycled. So that's, we, we were generating income at, some, uh, the town was in, generating income at some point, and now, um, now we're paying to actually remove recyclables from our town. Um, but that's not to say that we shouldn't recycle because there's, that's the best way to avoid waste and to keep kind of some circular motion happening with all of this. Um, if you don't uh, recycle with your, if you have a private carter who comes to your house to pick up your trash and you don't recycle, I would definitely urge you to look into what their recycling options are if they have any. If they don't, maybe you could consider switching providers. Um, talk to them, learn, you know, what they recycle so you can prepare yourself. Um, Ask how they or how they want the recyclables organized and managed so that you are not, you know, doing something that you shouldn't. And then you're thinking you're recycling, but you're not. And you know, your recyclables are getting contaminated, then end up in the landfill anyway. That's a huge problem, is the contamination with our recyclables. So all those efforts to recycle in the end, you know, are ending up in the landfill anyway, which is a horrible thing to think about. Um, so I recommend definitely bringing trash to the dump because um, I know that they have more options to recycle uh, there. The glass is a big one that's sometimes recycled and not in the private carters um, around Southampton town. Um, and special and a lot of um, uh, magazine paper products too. Um, Um, but all, the, all this is to say that the whole idea of being more sustainable isn't about recycling more. And I, I really want to stress that. Um, it's about trying to end up with less to recycle or throw away. That, and because we haven't, because as we just discussed, we need to start bringing less into our homes, right? In, and I, um, and I know that recyc my recycling bins are fuller these days as we navigate this new normal, but taking the time to figure out how we can change that. And you guys are obviously here, so you're interested in learning how to do that. Um, it's Recycling isn't the overall solution to our waste problem, um, but we do with we, what we can with what we have. Like we don't have those bulk, huge bulk stores like I mentioned before. Um, to get most of our food unpackaged. So a lot of that is that packaging waste. But as you can see, there's so much we can do at home um, and in our community to be more sustainable. Um, because there's always a better way. There's always a way. There's always an alternative um, than discarding, you know, a lot of our items just directly into the trash. So I hope I've given you um, some new ways to recycle less and avoid unnecessary trash, unnecessary trash. Okay, so thank you so much for being here. We have one question. You mentioned the microfiber made the, yeah. or being made out of synthetic product. What do you think about rags made of bamboo? I use them too. Oh yeah, bamboo is definitely a natural uh, resource and they grow like crazy and they don't use a lot of water. So it's definitely, um, a low impact option that I would definitely recommend. Yeah, just make sure, you know, getting in the habit of um, looking at the ingredients on your foods and, and all your products that you buy, your pillows, your sheets, you know, and trying to find those um, natural uh, fabric options, linen, cotton, um, supporting companies that are, have sustainable practices, shopping there first. Um, and I was I'm definitely covering this in the next talk about um, fast fashion and choosing secondhand and, or, you know, an, an option too is like going to Goodwill and buying some like big cotton dress or something and cutting it up, you know, like 
fabric stores sometimes have uh, scrap fabric bins um, that, that also can be used as rags. Okay, we have a um, question, can clothes be composted? Um, natural fiber made clothes can definitely, if you cut them up in little strips, can definitely be composted. Um, and uh, there are so many, not so many, but there's, there's enough uh, donation bins around that, and this is something I was gonna cover, uh, that I'll cover in the next talk, that people still throw their clothes away in the trash. And I'm, that's my, is mind boggling to me. The donation bins accept all clothes and shoes and, you know, any accessories, sheets, towels, bedding, um, you know, obviously they're in good condition because they're going to try to resell them or they're donated to, to folks that need them. Um, so you're not throwing like yucky things and ripped and unusable things in there. But um, yeah, if you can't, if you want to compost it for sure, you can, but donate it if it's in, in good wearable condition for sure. I've actually donated old towels to the animal shelters for the animals. Yes. And those make great rags too. You know, if you have big towels that you don't want to use anymore um, for whatever reason, you know, they got soiled in some way. Well, I guess you're not used, that you just don't want to use them in that way anymore. Yeah. Yep. just said unusable clothing is made into rags. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you? I think I only heard half of that question. Okay, um, unusable clothing is made into rags. Yes, so, yeah. Like, you know, if you have kids and they're outgrowing their clothes and there's a bunch of food stains on them, like cut them up into strips and use them, you know, you can make them whatever size that you need them to be. You know, you could just cut the arms off and the neck off and you have like a pretty nice size sheet of fabric to use. Or just use the whole shirt if you really want to put your hand in there and nice dusting option or cleaning the windows. You know, you can just flip the other side and go. It's not going to look pretty, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's using what you have. Um, to minimize that waste in the end. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you so much, Lauren. This was so informative and we look forward to having you come back to talk about the clothing and what we can yeah. do to recycle and reuse and donate the clothing. Yes. And thank you everybody for joining us tonight as we look into spring and the season of renewal and Earth Day coming up. It's a great way to start implementing some of these great suggestions. So thanks again, and we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Okay, bye-bye. Good night. Good night.